This is a calculation question, so don't be lazy. Make sure you show you're working. Make sure that you check your answer, check your units are coherent, and check through by putting them all through the calculator again to check you haven't made any sloppy powers of 10 errors or anything like that. Check your answer is sensible, but remember sometimes they're trying to ask you to calculate things that do surprise you. So this one is about resistance and linking the factors length and area to resistance and using graphs to calculate resistivity. Um, again, I think that this one is a really quite interesting question. Um, it's a good one using those core skills, rearranging algebra, understanding what graphs represent, proportionality inverse, proportionality, etc. etc. So pencil, pencil lead is a mixture of graphite and clay, we don't need that yet. Proportion of the graphite and clay in the sample determine the hardness of the pencil lead as well as the resistivity. Obviously we don't use the resistivity in normal use of pencils, but that gives you a clue as to what your question is going to be about. The diagram shows two sample, uh, samples of pencil lead made from the same mixture of graphite and clay. So firstly we're not changing the res resistivity, we are just changing the length and the diameter. Sample A has a resistance RA and has and sample B has a resistance RB and is twice the length, uh, sorry, twice the length and twice the diameter of sample A. So resistivity is linked to resistance by this equation here. Okay, resistivity being rho, R being there. So let's, well, write an equation for the resistance of RA. That's this one. Okay, and I'm going to actually um, simplify that because I've not got A here, I have D. And A is related to D by pi r squared. All right. And pi r squared is pi D over two. But I'm just gonna leave, I'm just gonna leave R in there because if I double D, then I double R. So that's fine, don't need to complicate things any more than that and pi we'll get rid of in a second as you'll see. Then a equation for RB. Well RB is the same resistivity twice the length and twice the diameter therefore twice the R. So it's actually pi 4 R squared because that's the same R as that and that is twice that so I can do that. So now I can equate the two or I can use um, the ratio RB to RA, so put that over that, and you'll start to see that some things ca cancel. So RB is rho 2L over 4 pi R squared, and RA is all of this, which I'm going to put in inversely as it's on the bottom line of my ratio there. Now I can do my cancellations. Rho cancels, L cancels, pi cancels, R squared cancels and you can see the ratio we're left with is 2 over 4 or 1 over 2. And that is your ratio. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I mean that's the simplest I can put it. It's all about proportional changes, proportional changes, okay? You can do that. All right, a graph supplied by the manufacturer shows the resistance R of pencil lead is inversely proportional to its cross-sectional area. Now that's a proportional graph, isn't it? Look really closely at the axes there. I think that's the errors that they're expecting people to make. You can still get some marks if you don't spot that but um, obviously you'll want to not do that. Resistivity of graphite is this. Use the graph to draw a conclusion about the effect of adding clay to graphite, okay? Essentially, what we can do is we can, I've got length as well there, we can actually take readings from this graph and take the largest possible triangle that I can with a ruler. So, ruler's ready at all times. Okay, and read them off as R, 21 ohms, just checking my um, units as I go, and A is 1 over 1.25 times 10 to the minus 6, yep. and it's going to come out of meters squared, 
right. Let's convert that now. Eight times ten to the five meters squared. Sorry, am I certain about that? That seems ridiculously large. Of course I'm not. Check again. You can do this. Eight times 10 to the minus seven meters squared. <laughs> that would have been a massive pencil. Okay, so I've, I've done that. And then, oh, length as well, look. And I can just convert that into meters because I'm smart, ready to go. Okay, now what to do? Well, I want to, I've got my data, I want to calculate resistivity. I remember my resi resistance is this equation. So rearrange for resistivity is RA over L equals rho. So just sum that around. Uh, 21 times 8 times 10 to the minus 7 over 0.15 equals, and I'll write that down because, do you know what, if I make a mistake, the examiner can give me a little bit of credit, potentially give me a mark for that working out. And I'd like that. One point one two times ten to the minus four. It's resistivity, so it's ohm meters is the unit of that. Um, okay, that's fine. Now, isn't there something else I need to do for fourth mark? Draw a conclusion. What conclusion can I add? Graphite is this resistivity of clay to graphite. Well, we know, don't we, that we know that they're a mixture of clay and graphite. So we can say then that. The resistivity is greater, yeah, larger than that. Resistivity of clay is greater than resistivity of graphite. And that makes sense when we think about what graphite is. It's got those layers with the free electrons in between. I'm happy with that. So that's my little conclusion there. Okay, um, so adding, I could finish that, adding clay. increases resistivity. Last one then, nice and easy. Resistance can also be affected by temperature. This again, pretty much is just gonna be drawing on our GCC. Resistance could be affected by temperature. Remember all the stuff about filament bulbs? Uh, why the resistance of a metal sample increases with an increase of temperature. So unless it's an NTC thermistor, what happens when you increase temperature? Um, higher temperature causes more kinetic energy. Of the ions in the metal lattice. Essentially, they're going to vibrate more, vibrate at a higher amplitude. This leads to more frequent collisions. Between electrons and ions. <clears throat> and I do think you need, say, more frequent or a higher rate of collisions, something like that. Because clearly, if we left it on for a million years, at a low rate of collisions, we end up with more collisions overall. It's about the rate of collisions, it's about the rate of flow of charge, it's, it's, a, you know, it's all divided by time. So in other words, the flow decreases. Okay, um, you could talk about as average 
drift velocity of charge decreases. So this one is really just your simple explanation from your GCSE that you're pretty used to, and I'm sure you managed that way back when. Okay, but you've just got to up, update the language a little bit more. So I hope that was really useful to you. Exam questions are a great way to practice for exams, but don't just do exam questions. There's, if you struggle with that exam question, then you probably need to revisit the theory for that topic. So do that before you have a go at some other ones. If I've made any mistakes, then correct them down below. And if you've got any more questions, then down below as well. Maybe you guys can help each other out. And there should be some um, playlists around here and a subscribe button if you like that and you want to see some more as and when I bring it out. All right, thanks a lot for watching.